Hey everybody and welcome back. Apologize, it has been a couple weeks, uh, I think two, since I released a video. We got a new puppy and it has kept me crazy, crazy busy. And I have just not had time to do anything outside of work and take care of this dog and normal family life. But anyway, I, we're back. I'm glad to be back. I really enjoy making these. Um, so before we get started, if you would, if you haven't already, please take a second and click like and subscribe. And we are going to finish up the uh, Trailhead Apex Triggers module. And again, we're going to do it with a little SFDX style development. So if... Uh, if you haven't watched those other ones and you're curious about how we're doing all this with scratch orgs and things like that, check out the previous videos in this series. Otherwise, we're going to dive right in and we are going to uh, go right to Trailhead, right? So we are right. We are on the second challenge in the Apex Triggers module and we have to write a bulk trigger. And I guess maybe we'll talk a little bit about what that means. Really, all of your Apex code, really with no exception, should be bulk code. I mean, it's really essential to developing on the platform. And uh, what we're going to do here, because if you read the requirements right, we uh, it's going to specifically test inserting 200 records in one operation. So and we're going to talk about how we have to do that. Cause, right, So there's a governor limit on DML operations that is... I opened this up before the video. Um open where's our DML limit just so we can read everything through uh, total number of DML statements issued right is 150 so if we wanted to, if we inserted each of those tasks we saw in our requirements one at a time we would exceed that governor limit and this is I mean, it's just good clean efficient development even if there weren't the governor limits there this is the way you should be doing stuff honestly um, so anyway let's say so we got to write a trigger called closed opportunity trigger and with closed opportunity trigger active, let's see. So if an opportunity is inserted or updated with stage of closed one, we're going to create a task with the subject follow-up test task. And we have to associate the task with the opportunity by filling in the what ID field with the opportunity ID. And this challenge, and this is where it has to be bulkified, specifically tests 200 records in one operation. All right, so let's... Uh, no further ado, let's get to it. Let's open up Illuminated Cloud and uh, start coding this sucker up. All right, so I already just kind of put the basic uh, trigger stub in here, closed opportunity trigger, and we're going to do it on after update and after insert. Uh, because of the nature of this challenge, I, I would do this a little differently in reality. But anyway, we always have to, because we know we're looking for IDs, right? Um, we do not get an ID on a before insert trigger. And we know we need that opportunity ID to associate the task with it, which is why we have to do an after insert trigger. All right, so we've got that in place. And let's, real quick, we are just going to, because you know I don't like to write business logic in a trigger, even for trailhead. We're going to, opportunity, we're going to start coding up a trigger handler. Opportunity, trigger handler. Yeah handler and we'll call it handler equals new opportunity trigger handler okay and real quick we are just going to make that class since we don't have one yet we're going to make apex class and we're just going to call it opportunity trigger handler. Okay. And I'm sorry. So we got our class. And all right. We're going to give it a method. Uh, we're going to say this is a public static. We're going to call it create task on closed one. All right. Because that's exactly what it does. And we're going to pass trigger new in here. And if you remember from watching the last video on uh, triggers, and it's not going to return anything, so we need to stick a void in there, right? Because this uh, method has no return type. Public static void. And it's not going to be static, though. So it's just public void. There we go. Um, we're going to pass trigger.new into this trigger handler. And because it's an opportunity trigger, trigger.new is just a list of opportunities list 
opportunity. And I am just going to call it trigger new. That's just kind of my little convention for naming these things that are getting passed in from a trigger handler. All right, so real quickly, let's go back to our actual trigger, and then we're going to be done with it. Our closed opportunity trigger. Handler. Closed. Create task on closed one. Whoa, what'd I do? I don't know why my typing always gets so bad when I'm, uh, whenever I'm recording a video on YouTube, right? Trigger done now. All right, so that is all we've got to do for our trigger, right? We are just going to pass trigger.new into our opportunity trigger handler. And because of the nature, and I don't want to make this more complicated than it is, uh, really in a, in a real trigger, in a real, in a real business, I would recommend you handle these separately. If it is an after update or before update trigger, I would compare, because we're just going to right now, we're going to create a task if the stage name is closed one, right? In reality, so what happens next time somebody updates your opportunity and that stage name is closed one? Are you going to create another task, you know, when they just updated any other random field on opportunity? So what you would really want to do is if it's an insert, so I would say if it's an insert and stage name equals close one, do this, right? Um, if it is after update or before update, actually, because we've already got the ID on an update, I would compare trigger.new, if you remember old one, to trigger.old to trigger.old map. And I would compare like if, if the stage name in trigger.new equals closed one, and the stage name in trigger.old map does not equal closed one, then create a task. But Trailhead does not want us to do it that way. And I'm just gonna because I don't want to overcomplicate it. Maybe that's another video. We'll do it like the actual, like real way we would do it in a business and not for trailhead. But for right now, hey, let's uh, let's just go for it, right? So to in order to bulkify this trigger, that's our challenge, right? We need to create a collection, a list. So what we're going to create is a collection. Remember, list is a type of a collection of data of tasks. Task. I'm going to call it tasks to insert. All right, and that is our task. So we are gonna, every task that we create, we are gonna add to that list. And then we're going to insert them all at once. So now let's just loop through the opportunities that come in through trigger.new. So that sounds like a for loop, right? For opportunity, OPP, whoop, in, in trigger new. Because remember, so we're gonna say for the opportunity, in this collection that got passed in through my argument, trigger new, we're gonna then, for each one of those opportunities, do this thing. So that sounds to me like an if statement, right? Conditional logic, only if the stage name equals closed one. So if OPP stage name equals closed one. And I want to call out your attention. This is something that's easy when you're a new developer, and especially if you don't have, like, a, you're not using a good editor to help you when you do a boneheaded mistake. Double equal. Double equal is how we check for a quality, all right? Equal sign is how we assign a value. Right, so that's why IntelliJ, right? It's an illuminated cloud. It's helping me out right there and saying, "Hey, dummy, you cannot do this." Right? That's for a you know, because um, it's an if statement. If it's if statement, right? We expect that to evaluate to boo to a boolean is what it's saying. Um, but instead, we found a string. Right? So, like if I was trying to assign the value of closed one to stage name, then I would do a single equal. But when I am checking for a quality or not check for uh, checking then I'm going to use the double equal okay so if stage name is equal to close one we're going to create a new task so task and I'm just going to call it task t equals new task and at this point there's really two I think equally acceptable ways to do this you can set the values in your constructor like this Subject, and you know what? What was that? 
What's our subject line? Follow up test task. I'll just copy and paste that out of there. Follow up test task. And what ID equals OPP opportunity. So we're saying, hey, assign the value, assign the string, follow up test task to subject, and the what ID is going to be equal to the ID of the opportunity that is currently in our loop. Um, and I'd want to so say you have on tasks, and this can be a little tricky, you have a who ID and a what ID field. And these are considered polymorphic relationships. They can relate to Really, I would say go read the documentation, but what ID is when you're trying to relate a task to things like an opportunity. Uh, who ID is when you are trying to relate tasks to, to a person, to a contact, to a user, things like that. Uh, so you've got two different fields that you can use to relate tasks to different types of S objects. Okay, so that is one way to do that. We could all, you could also just do it like this, t.subject equals you know, follow up test task, t dot what ID equals p ID. Each one of these totally fine, I think totally acceptable. I tend to, if it's one or two values, a lot of times I tend to do it in the constructor. If it is a long list of values I'm setting, I tend to then go down this way just because I it's to me it's all about readability and it's whatever's going to I think produce the most readable outcome so i tell you what for this one you know we'll just clean it out of the constructor and we'll just do it that way all right and I deleted a parentheses by accident okay so we've created our task now if we did this if we did insert insert t if I deployed this to Trailhead right now, it's going to fail, all right? Because they, they specifically said, you remember, they're going to test this against 200 tasks. And our DML limit is, what, 150. So every time an opportunity goes through, and let's say we get 200 opportunities at once in this loop, they all have a stage name of closed one. That means we're going to try to insert 150 tasks or 200 tasks. But so we're going to we are going to blow apart at 150. We are going to get an unrecoverable error for the DML exception. Um, so what we want to do is add all of our tasks. Remember, we created that list task to insert dot add and add is just a built in method that comes with the task object. And we are going to add T. So now when we are done with every single, like this, every opportunity of trigger.new has gone through our for loop. Everyone that needs a task has had one created and has had that task assigned up here to our list of tasks. The last thing we're gonna do is insert that list. So usually, probably don't need to do this for trailhead, but just to make sure that uh, we're writing, op we're not going to use a DML if we don't want to. So we're going to say if task to insert dot is empty. And remember that exclamation point over there I want to show you is negation, right? So if it's not, so we're saying if it is not empty, then do this. So, you know, why try to insert an empty list, right? Insert tasks to insert. And that should be all that we need to do. So you could see if we could just talk through this, we've got our class. We have a method that's taking one parameter, trigger, trigger new, a list of opportunities. Here we are creating a list of tasks called tasks to insert. Next line is our for loop, and we are going to loop through every single opportunity that was passed in from trigger.new. And we are going to say if the stage name in the current opportunity equals closed one, then we're going to create a new task. We're going to assign a value to the subject. We're going to assign the what ID to the ID of the opportunity. We are going to add it to the collection, to the list of tasks that we instantiated up here. And then if there are tasks in our list, we're going to insert them into the database. Clean up that empty space there. 
I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm going to deploy this. Now, if you remember, SFDX, force source deploy, dash U to your, uh, to your dev org, Whoop. and dash wait, and then dash P, wherever the path to your file is, it's pretty much always going to be in force app, though, right? So now let's go over to Trailhead and check out, see what happened. All right, let's check this challenge, see if we passed. Fingers crossed, right? There right, we go. Assessment complete. 500 points. Actually, I did this one a couple years ago, but it's uh, so that is how you write a simple Apex bulk trigger. If you have any questions at all, hit me up in the comments. I'd uh, love to hear from everybody. Again, if you haven't, please take a second, hit like and subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see, uh, see me do in the next video. And keep coding, keep getting better every day, and I'll uh, see everybody soon. Take care.